But digressing, let's get to the number one topic of the day in the last like 24 hours or so of the boxing world, which is the Deontay Wilder Lewis Ortiz fight. Per Mike Coppinger, sources PBC is finalizing a deal for Fox pay per view to carry Deontay Wilder's heavyweight title rematch with Lewis Ortiz on November 23rd in Las Vegas. Showtime showed out a hefty license fee for Wilder Brazil and hoped to land the fight on its pay per view arm. Announcement expected Saturday. Now, unfortunately, guys, this is where it gets a little sad. A little sad. And we're going to get Steven Espinosa's exact reaction from this and uh, his exact quotes from this. But you guys know, when anyone is either sad or angry, it's dramatic reading time. And when they're sad, it's more like sad reading time. Showtime Espinosa's Wild Ortiz review deal didn't make sense for us, per Keith Idak. For a quote, We had the opportunity to distribute the pay-per-view, but the deal didn't make sense for us, Espinosa told Boxing Scene on Tuesday. Obviously, we love Deontay Wilder, and we believe Wilder Ortiz will be an exciting fight, but we're not going to take disproportionate risk in order to secure it. We know the boxing market has been undergoing significant change, but that's not unprecedented. Over the years, we've seen a lot of newcomers enter the sport and try to change the marketplace. We were here before that, we will be here after that, and continue to thrive by making smart, strategic choices at the right time. Going further along, whether it's sports or entertainment, there are times when you have to pass on a certain deal. Whether it's a film or a TV series or sports rights. And sometimes the best deals are the ones you don't make. That can be disappointing. We have to let a fight go somewhere else. That's the nature of the beast. We're disappointed, of course, because of our long relationship with Deontay. But we are continue to focus on delivering the best boxing on TV for subscribers and delivering when the time is right. The sport's biggest pay-per-views like we've been doing. He continues, We've been in this sport for a long time, Espino said. We understand this sport as well as anyone. We have the best production, we have the strongest announcer team, we know the business and we know how to make the biggest fights, and we've done more of the sport's biggest fights than anyone else. And we didn't become the industry leader and the sport's longest running platform by taking force risk. We became the industry leader by making smart business business decisions and making or, and smart strategic decisions. That's what the Wild Ortiz rematch outcome was. A principled strategic decision for the long-term strategy of Showtime Boxing. Fuck that shit. Fuck boxing. Fuck boxing. Now, here's my thoughts before... Uh, actually, a little brief point just to add to it. Uh, per Mike Coppinger, Stephen Espinosa talking to him. Espinosa on what this means for Showtime's future in partnership with PBC. Uh, we're, we are well into planning for first quarter of 2020, but this means the end of boxing... Uh, oh, sorry, if this means the end of boxing at Showtime, certainly no one has told anyone around here any of that. Obviously, that is to be expected to push down any of the 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 talking points out there, the narrative that Showtime boxing is going the same way of HBO boxing. Now, my thoughts on all of this, and I'll try to do my best to tackle it from each angle because there are separate angles to tackle this uh, subject. On the Wilder Ortiz to deal in the illusion by Espinosa that it was too much money. Okay, that's basically what the illusion was. That the license fee for that fight was far too much than what they were willing to really offer up. And it was risky, to use the words that Espinosa used exactly, it would be risky for them long term to put that much money in this type of fight. Understandable. I think a lot of people actually would probably agree with Espinosa in that sense, right? However, coupled with the information we have been hearing from Lance Pugmire and others, that if this was to happen, this would cause a gigantic rift between Showtime and Al Heyman and PBC. As far as what I have seen from the attempted uh, PR sort of spin that Espinosa has been putting out there. 
it really hasn't been, oh, don't worry, PBC is great, we love Heyman, we love Wilder. It's a little bit of, hey, we love Wilder, but to be honest, it, it didn't seem like a trying to make clear to the public that this relationship was still tight. There was still a tight bond between PBC and Showtime. It, it, that, to me, was not clear in what, what anything that Espinosa said via Coppinger, via Keith Adek. Maybe other people will have a different opinion about that, but from what I read, I don't get that uh, sense. So the the possibility that this leads to a permanent rift in PBC and Showtime long term, because obviously we have the uh, Lubin Gache uh, card in October. There's a de- December seventh card. I think they want another card now because they have a lot more money in the budget not being put towards Wilder Ortiz. I'm expecting after this year for that question to truly be answered, what this relationship is between Showtime and PBC. And to be honest, it can't be good, guys. Like, there, There's no way, A, CBS slash Showtime are happy losing Wilder and Ortiz too, in any way. Even if it was, again, too much money for the asking price of that certain fight, Right? especially in comparison or relative to the budget of Showtime, right? However, I think, uh, or to add to it, uh, I think we have a possible rift between Showtime and Espinosa because there's no way I think that Showtime as a whole, their executive board is going to look at Espinosa, you know, in any sort of good light at this point in time. You just lost us Wilder. What happened? You blew the budget on one fight. What happened here? And that one fight didn't even get us blockbuster numbers, really. It didn't even break a million. What do, What's happening here? What's the strategy? It doesn't seem like there is one. And those two rifts, again, Showtime overall, CBS overall, and PBC, there's a rift between that. I think that's almost unavoidable. I think it's pretty obvious at this point in time. And a rift, rift between Showtime and Espinosa is possible as well because Espinosa is looked at to be the guy to get them the fights, and he did not get them the fight here. And this was a significant one to lose, in my opinion. Now, just to play devil's advocate, could I and others be blowing this out of proportion, and could Showtime uh, do what they've done this year long-term, and that just be their strategy, to be sort of the secondary wheel to PBC's apparatus in terms of their network uh, priorities. And on top of that, to sort of show not necessarily regional fights, but in essence, kind of regional fights. I know people don't want to look at it into that context, but like the the Erickson Lubin Robert uh, Easter card has no championships on it. Great fights, competitive fights, but there's no championship on the fight. It's a regional U.S. card. Uh, Javante Davis, while world champion, a lot of his cards have been not that deep, and I would say specifically a regional card to the DMV area in a lot of ways. So I, I'm i hesitant to go and say, yes, Showtime is, um, if I'm playing devil's advocate, I'm hesitant to go, oh, Showtime is safe and the clear, don't worry about it. Um, you guys are over-concerned because... I don't know if this their current content base is enough to, again, a, sort of get rid of that tension and rift between Showtime and Espinosa because there's no way they're looking at this and saying, we're getting our bang for a buck. And to combine it with other things I've brought up in the past and other shows, other videos, go look them up on our channel. Uh, I've talked about the Viacom and CBS merger and Viacom owning or being a majority owner of Bellator MMA, the second biggest MMA promotion. And that president of that MMA promotion, Scott Coker, used to be the president of Strike Force MMA, which was on Showtime. And that built up Ronda Rousey, Daniel Cormier, Luke Rockhold, Gilbert Melendez, Nick Diaz in a way. So there's a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of potential combat sports that they could still grab and appease a combat sports fan base but a pure boxing fan base i don't see i don't see this issue being remedied the issue being all of pbc's big fights are going to fox that issue has been apparent and consistent all year 
And to get off of the devil's advocate band, because I really don't think that. I think this is a major concern for Showtime. I think there is probably, and honestly, there is rifts between all these parties right now. There has to be. And from the reports from Lance Pugmire and others, there are. I I am I'm curious and I'm concerned for Showtime boxing, specifically his longevity, because they're not getting big fights. I don't know if this is enough to satisfy their audience and subscriber base that wants this type of content. You know, one car maybe a month that really isn't the best, maybe doesn't even have a championship on top of it. Is that worth subscribing to Showtime alone? Maybe it's not. Maybe if you, there's other stuff you like on Showtime, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, this is a major concern for Showtime. Because uh, I don't know if this rem- this issue gets remedied. It's clear Heyman and PBC are aware of the advantage on, of being on the Fox brand platform. And they seem like they want to hitch their wagon to that as long as possible. And I don't blame them. I think it's smart business. Uh, Rubisky in the chat saying, what happened to Strikeforce? It got bought out. The UFC bought it out, and obviously it folded the company. So that's what happened to Strikeforce. Oh, the fighters went to the UFC, for example. That's why we had Ronda Rousey in the UFC, Dana Cormier, others. Digressing from that. Now, the fight itself being Fox pay-per-view, does that change the potential buy rate? I believe so, just like I think it will change the buy rate for Spence Porter, if that would to be on Showtime pay-per-view, I think it would get less buys because the Fox machine is a better machine, clearly. Uh, and on top of that, it I would say, surprisingly speaking, I think Showtime, overall, their production quality and the people on their team, at least on camera, are far better than Fox. But there is a real like sense of like fans over there at at fox like you you get a sense like whoever is in charge of the fox sports pbc account is truly a fan of the game you know like you can just tell there there's fans over there to some degree uh maybe too much of fans fanboys but digressing from that point uh a john in the chat the thing about showtime though majority of their subscribers are from other shit like their tv shows i literally subscribed to them before i even got into boxing years ago for dexter yes but a john i think you're smart enough to understand that when we're talking about this discussion, we're purely talking about the people that subscribe to Showtime for Boxing. Will this issue, because it is an issue, cause them to leave? And I think the answer is clearly probably yes. <laughs> if you're not getting the content you you are desiring, the content that you want, then why are you paying money to it? You're going to stop paying money to this uh, this service. Point blank and simple. Now, of course, a giant, I'm not saying Showtime as a whole is gone. I'm purely talking Showtime boxing. Because let's be honest, Showtime sports is a different thing entirely as well. You know, like Showtime sports could be fine. You know, if they get Bellator MMA, Showtime sports, I think, overall continues to be okay. And on top of it, probably even thrives with MMA back on this, on Showtime, more so than PBC. Might be controversial. How. Ever, I I don't think this all this happens quickly and close enough together. This Viacom CBS merger slash Bellator moving to Showtime and PBC leaving Showtime to be close enough to where there aren't issues with losing at least a percentage of your subscriber base. Wherever that percentage is, I don't know. I don't think. Ooh, if anyone in the chat that can remember back when the big Showtime press conference, right? And Espinosa had the PowerPoint of like all the data and statistics of basic consumer consumption, right? Uh, of sports entertainment in the U.S. I wonder if there was any slide on what percentage of Showtime users watch boxing or like percentage are subscribed to Showtime purely because of boxing. Uh, I... I I wonder what that percentage is. Don't know what it is. It could be 5%. It could be 10%. It could be 20%. It could be 50%. I don't know. I have no idea. But I think regardless, Showtime's fine. Showtime sports and Showtime boxing, very different things entirely. Um, 
like Sitting on a Hill with Kevin Bacon. Great show. But that has nothing to do with their sports department. Point blank and simple. Andre Diakonu. What up, Andre Diakonu? Longtime supporter and listener of the show. Hope you're doing good, man. Uh, been a while since I've seen you. Uh, how is this fight profitable for Wilder on a pay-per-view? Would he make less than the DAZN deal? Guaranteed, absolutely, he would make less. Because DAZN's up money, uh, it's an up money deal, right? So uh, upfront, guaranteed, disclosed money, absolutely. Back end money included? Uh, probably not. But then again, I don't. I don't know here. This is this is the weird case here where because of the US model there is a level of just dark money in the sport that gets exchanged that we just don't know about. And I'm assuming that the Brazil the Wilder Brazil license fee, the purses were far more than what was disclosed because what was disclosed wasn't that much. And to the degree that it is clear Wilder Brazil affected Showtime's budget and Showtime Boxing, Showtime Boxing's budget. I want to make that clear for anyone out there who want to be argue semantics here. Showtime Boxing's budget and their long term schedule of the year. I don't know what that figure is. It clearly was a lot more than what was listed, and we know that for every fight, every big fight's like that. Um, it's always been that way. I, I'm assuming Wilder Ortiz, if it's Fox, I mean, look, they're going to do 300,000 pay-per-view buys at least, guys. So they're, they're going to break even no matter what. And he's probably going to make 10, 15 million, maybe 20 million. When it's all said and done, we include back-end money. Uh, international distribution rights, uh, gate revenue, percentage split, uh, souvenirs, or um, what would be the right term? Like shirts, apparel, you know, any sort of like that. He gets probably a cut of that in the arena. Um, concessions maybe as well. These big guys usually get a cut of everything. You know, that was like the Mayweather deal. He got cut of everything. He bought a beer at the arena. Mayweather's getting a cut of that. I assume Wilder, at least to some degree, is similar to that at this point in time. So he's making a lot of money. Does it all come from Showtime? No. Or in this case, Fox, right? But to sorry to answer your question, I know I've done the long ranting way of doing it. Dre, I apologize. But upfront money, of course not with DAZN, but back end money, it probably evens out.